give us a sense uh, just uh, you know you had mentioned what it was like for uh for folks in venezuela you were about to tell me uh mm-hmm. the the wealthy uh mm-hmm. presumably the elite in venezuela um where are they in terms of this uh the having the economy crashed well it depends whether they're inside or outside the state alas i mean there are there are dollar incomes to be had uh, there are people who are still plugged into the oil industry uh, which is basically run by the Venezuelan military these days. The head of the, the state-run firm, the PDVSA, is, 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 a, is a general, is a Manuel Quevedo. Uh, you have the exploitation of gold and coltan mines in the south of Venezuela, which has grown hugely um, in, in the last few years, again, with military, uh, military control and traffickers and what have you. People who are in on those, in or, or people or the military are in charge of importing food, which is another source of abuses. The people who are in on on those acts can generally get money in dollars, and so they're doing all right. But if you're a um, a corporate executive, if you like, for a a Venezuelan firm um, and don't have access to a dollar income, you're probably going to be on. Be- about 100 to 150 dollars a month income which is better than people on minimum wage but is but is not fantastic but you know there is still obviously a dollarized elite and you can see the signs of that in caracas you can still see you know expensive restaurants relatively full even in these days Okay, so um, this uh, state of affairs leads mm-hmm. up to um, some uh, popular uprisings. Give yep. us a sense, I mean, um, and, and lead to uh, January 23rd when mm-hmm. uh, Juan Guaido announces that um, uh, via the, a constitutional provision, Article 233 of the Constitution, mm-hmm. he was assuming, I guess, the interim presidency. How much of the um, the protests, which were getting pretty violent uh, mm. leading up to the twenty third, how much how organic were these protests? Oh, that's very difficult to say, really. I, I, I mean, there were there were a spate of protests. I mean, there have been protests over the years, uh, big protests in 20, 2014, the huge four months of protests in twenty seventeen. Organic in what sense that people voluntarily go onto the streets and protest without being provoked or whether they were called by the opposition. Clearly, the gesture by Juan Guaido um, leading up to his self-proclamation as president has brought the opposition out of hiding. I mean, the opposition was was been totally vanquished last year. Uh, they didn't know what to do. They were divided. They were demoralized. They were uncertain as to how to stop, uh, you know, being being cornered and if and their, or their leaders, uh, you know, arrested by the government. So that that brought them out. So these huge marches, which you're seeing on a regular basis now, that's that's obviously organized by the, the, the internal opposition. There were also lots of small, I think this is what you may be referring to, those smaller, more violent protests in the Chavista bastions you know, the, the loyalist strongholds in Caracas. When you actually look at the reports, the videos, the, the, the audio coming out from there, I mean, people were not really protesting against political repression or, you know, calling for a U.S. intervention. They were complaining about prices. I mean, it's prices because the, you, you're, you're looking at a predicted inflation rate for this year of 10 million percent. And that makes life incredibly difficult for people who just want to buy bread and their next meal. Um, and that is um, that is the reality. But those protests in the loyalist strongholds are seem to be uh, seem to be ongoing. But often the information is unreliable from there. OK, so give us a sense of of. Um, we have a, uh, an odd situation, it seems to me, where uh, different members of the international community have lined up on uh, opposing sides as to the validity of, of, of Juan Guaido's uh, gambit. Mm-hmm. Um, and there seems even in the context of, of people's assessment of that gambit, not just from an international in terms of a governmental, but it seems to me that there's also a split as to the um, validity of what he's doing between a, uh, you know, um, citing um, Article 233 of the Constitution mm-hmm. as yeah. starting a process to have a new president versus him being the interim president. Um, give me your sense of where these fault lines are and why, why they might exist. 
I mean, the, 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 we are in a very hazy area. You, you can look at Article 233, and it says very clearly, if the, if the president is not fulfilling his or her duties, if there's what's called an, an abandono del cargo, or sort of a vacation of his, of his or her post, the post has been vacated because of mental, defi- you know, just some of the president goes missing, or they're mentally no longer able to take on the post, then the, the National Assembly can take this initiative. Is a disputed election a premise uh, that can allow for that article to be introduced? It's not at all clear. Um, but then at the same time, Maduro's government has hardly been you know, uh, honoring the constitution uh, d- over the last few years either. In fact, the number of abuses of the constitution by the government is, 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 is numerous. So, uh, I, I, you know, I don't think we can, you can, we can, uh, accuse Guaido of doing something the government would never think of doing. But there's no doubt it is at the very limits of the interpretation of the constitution. But I think the other point you raise is very important. It says explicitly, a 30-day interim president, uh, which will then lead to free and fair elections. Now, the fact of the matter is what happens when we get to February the 23rd, if there are no elections on the horizon, how does it then work? Uh, You know, the entire assumption by the opposition, but m- more so by the United States and the Latin American government, is this has got to move quickly. There's got to be a rapid collapse of the of the Maduro government, and then move on to 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 to, to elections. Uh, but it, it might not be that fast. And if it's not that fast, what sort of constitutional terrain are we in? Come the end of February. Could we be faced in in Venezuela with two illegitimate presidents? I mean, this is the worry which we have to deal with. Uh, I I think, quite frankly, the way this is now being played out, this way this crisis is being played out politically, suggests we're beyond the realm of the Constitution and are looking at politics in its raw state. So the formation of blocks of power on the ground and the, the, the quest for supremacy. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time, and I imagine that uh, where the military falls on that divide is going to be uh, decisive, ultimately. Absolutely crucial, and there's no doubt why, though, has appealed directly to the military. The military, the high commander so far, uh, uh, you know, pledged their loyalty to Maduro, so that will be absolutely crucial. But the fact of the matter is the recent U.S. measures against uh, the oil transactions will mean that within a few weeks we're going to start seeing even worse economic conditions on the ground in Venezuela with very uncertain consequences. Ivan Briscoe, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it.